Good day everyone, it's me again Lucky Kuhn and for today's video I'll be teaching you the science behind the skin tone color. It is important because it is better to understand the thing before you even paint it and so that you can adjust things if something might change. Just like lighting. I knew a lot of artists who's relying on color palettes for skin tone and I'm not really against that but I don't really recommend that much because when you're doing realistic colors for your skin tone, skin tone color depends on the color of light. You don't always use one color palette in different kind of lighting and there are things, there are a lot of things going on to our surroundings that affects to the colors of the object. I mean, I'm not saying the palette is bad, it's just, it's just, it's better to understand what's going on to the palette, like why the artist use this kind of colors for this. Because palette is actually a simpler way to get colors that we need, but it doesn't always apply to everything. Unless you understand that this palette is for sunset colors, for skin tones, something like that. And of course you don't just randomly pick the colors on the palette and everything magically appears to be better. So now I'm here teaching you the science behind the skin tone color. After this, color palette will make more sense when you're looking at it. So we start with this gray sphere and we have the ground. I choose the lighter colors for the ground because we're gonna use that later on. But since I want to pick around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm gonna make this a little bit yellow. Because the sunlight is more yellow when going sundown. Now for the skin tone color, I'm just gonna transparent lock the layer. So what should be the color of the mid-tone? Maybe most of us will just go ahead directly pick the flesh color, of course, the little bit yellowish reddish kind of stuff over here, here, or maybe here. I don't know, we're just gonna pick it like that because that's what we see in our everyday life. And some of us and some of us isn't Caucasian, some are Asian, so the skin tone color doesn't always appear like this. And of course I can understand that you can always have the choice to change the color. But do you think you understand why is the color looks like that? You might think it doesn't matter because that's what we see. But actually no, it always matters when you apply lighting to it. Now, let's understand why the color looks like that. I have your skin tone color is normally like this. It is a bloodless skin color. And underneath the skin is our blood. Our skin tone is a little bit translucent. So therefore, we can lower the opacity of the skin color and slowly we're getting to the color what we need let's say like that of course different people has different skin color so it doesn't always appear like that so we have that so now you understand why the skin tone color looks like that keep that in mind because later on we'll get to that now the shadow looks like black but i know most of you will say don't use black to shadows, we'll get to that later. So let's just make it a little transparent and, that's, and that should be great. Now before we proceed to the shadow, let's put a light to our skin tone. Let's create new layer and just clip mask it. I press Ctrl Alt G for clipping mask so that I can color freely without going out the circle. So what should be the color of the light tone? I'm just gonna pick the skin tone color and go straight somewhere lighter like that and then put a little yellow to it because the sun color is a little yellow because it's 3 p.m. and then I'm just gonna apply it here that's the highlight now we'll be adding the specular lighting specular lighting is basically just a reflection of the light which means it is the lightest part of the highlight. I'm just gonna add white to it, maybe white, yeah. Because sun is white actually. And the light color depends how the object absorbs it. So I'm going white, but not fully white, of course. But you can go white, full white, because we're just gonna blur it out later on. So now we all know that we all know that skin tone isn't glossy, right? But this is just a guide, I'll just put that there because later I can use that. 
Now we're going for the shadow. Of course, most of us will say don't use black for shadow, which actually true, technically true. But for now, let's ask ourselves why don't use black. We'll get to that sooner. For now, let's go darker for the skin tone. Don't apply anything, just go darker like that. Okay, I guess that's good. Now, let's proceed to the reason why we don't go straight to black as a shadow. That is because there's ambient light everywhere. There's light in the surroundings, not just the main light. It's not light is just not one and zero. There's always light everywhere. Any light that is not came directly from the light source is the ambient light. Ambient light is just a fancy word for bounce light, reflective light, or those kind of lights. So any light on the surrounding that creates light is called ambient light. So technically, moonlight is ambient light because the light from the moonlight is came from the sun. Moon doesn't have a light. It only borrows a light from the sun. So where can I find ambient light in this part? It's from the sky because sky also creates light to our surroundings. Just take time to stare someone's shadow on the ground. And if you look closely, you will notice that it's a little blue that's because of the sky. So let's create a new layer and clip mask it. And then just color pick the sky and color it right there. Or I'm just going to use the lasso tool. So... But skin tone don't usually absorb a lot of light. So it's a little low just like that maybe that's enough and then another ambient light is came from the ground maybe like that and lower the opacity just like that and of course the way light bounces isn't equal so it should be more on the middle but we'll get to that sooner but of course this is not all of it there's something is missing the subsurface scattering i'm sure when you were a kid you you put a flashlight to your fingers and you'll see this reddish color of your skin reddish orange something like that so what makes it like that remember when we're talking about the skin tone color that's the reason why our skin a little translucent and light we're able to get through to our skin color and then our skin absorbs the light and spread it around the same as the blood underneath it so it's more visible now because the blood is also absorbing the light let's just assume the blood color be like that this is the blood surface scattering but maybe try to change it a little I am sure that you were able to see these two skin tones. We're not using red because this is not like you put flashlights to your fingertips. That one absorbs a lot of light because it's very close. This one, the blood color, absorbs lesser light and the skin tone color is being mixed up. So now after that, let's proceed to the shadow. So earlier, we've talked about the ambient lighting. So of course, shadows are being affected by that. So let's add blue on it because of the sky you can use color balance or the hue saturation and luminosity by going to edit tonal correction and you can find everything here we're not yet done here we still have to add one last thing the ambient occlusion which i always mention to every video i have when it comes to colorization i feel like i'm <laughs> i'm a ambient occlusion guy now because it is really important because it makes things more realistic it gives more depth so if you don't have any idea about ambient occlusion it's basically the darkest area of the shadow we talk about ambient light right and then of course light bounces everywhere just like that and light from the sky came from here let's say this is a corner light hits here and then bounces there bounces there bounces there but it's not infinity. Somehow it loses its brightness later on. So this is where the ambient occlusion appears. If it is hard for you to remember the word ambient occlusion, then call it a second shadow. I would prefer to remember how it works than remembering the words. So to our subject, where would be the ambient occlusion? Of course, right here on this area. And for the shadow, it should be somewhere there. Remember a lot of artists said don't use black to your shadow, which is technically correct, but you're still gonna use the black to apply on ambient occlusion. But since it mixes to another color, so technically it's not black, but you're still gonna use the black. Does that make sense? So we're going to use the airbrush 
and then go to the black. Apply a little underneath it. Do the same thing to the shadow. So yeah, just like that, just like that. So this is all we need for our colors. Yes, this is all of it. Now we're just gonna blend it. For the shadow, we're just gonna blur the top. And a little blur to that. Let's avoid to make it very sharp. Now for the skin tone, I'm going to merge all of this layer, merge selected layers. Actually, you can use the blend tool here if you want to. But what I do is Gaussian Blur. Go to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. Now, from here, you can set the blurness of the colors. Maybe that's good. Now we're having a great result. I'm going to use Soft Brush to refine everything because there are something isn't correct here just like here and then a little bit darker from the bottom the ambient occlusion area just like that and then lights from the ground so now i'm going to refine everything i'm gonna time lapse it all right so you might wonder what did i just did there i just color pick something and then use the soft brush Color pick, soft brush, color pick, soft brush. Again and again. It's like that. And from there, you can add texture to your skin tone. If you can find your friends or you can look at the person, try to study the, the color of the shadow, how strong the light could be. I mean, I'm not really sure about this. I can find some reference everywhere or just look around to my surroundings and I can adjust it from here by just going to tonal corrections and then go to levels and that too bright i don't know or maybe it is too yellowish so i can go to color balance take off a little bit of yellow you know sometimes your brain cannot tell what what's right or wrong until you see it that's a weird thing about our brain but that's why we always need reference we always do to visually refresh our mind at this point i'm just playing around and trying to correct what I think it's not right but now we're getting this result so because like what I said all colors on the surroundings affects the object so I guess the skin tones high ends ends here and let me show you a little example that different lighting has different skin tone color it is not that much I just quickly added it to show you visually all right that is all for this video and i hope you learned something from this the next time you'll be seeing color palette it now makes more sense why they choose those colors to the skin tone or colors for the surrounding something like that color palette can help but you just need a little understanding on it to make it more effective and somehow color palette can help you do a stylized kind of work if you don't really mind about real realistic colors because today's generation realistic isn't always the greatest thing you'll do in art. There are styles, of course. You can make the shadow purple if you wanted. I usually do that in my work. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something. And if you like it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more art tutorial in the future. And art talk as well.